everyone. My name is Takema Staten Brooks. I'm the Director of Horizons Education. Today I'm going to bring you a little context for what it means to live on campus. Along with me, you're going to see some of our leadership team who also work on campus, making sure that you have the best experience ever. Part of this video is designed to allow you to understand the culture of living on campus and what it means to be a Razorback. One of the questions I get often is, what are some of the benefits of living on campus? Well, lucky for you, I'm going to tell you three of them. The first one is that students who live on campus are actually retained at a higher level and make it past their first year into their sophomore, junior, and senior year. As a student who lives on campus, you can also live on campus beyond your first year. Those who also live on campus receive higher grades, and that's because they are closer to the resources that make them most successful. So think of the library, the dining halls, your academic classrooms, and parking. There are several key staff members who will be critical to your success as a student living on campus. Going through those, I'd like to introduce the CRE position first. Coordinators for Residence Education, which we call CREs, are live-in staff members that work and serve the communities in which you live. The resident assistants live on each resident's residential floor and work with the students to host events, serve as a resource, and conduct regular check-ins with the students. We have residence hall admins who serve at our front desk, greeting you, sorting mail, and making sure you're familiar with the Fayetteville area. Our maintenance and housekeeping staff are here to provide you a sanitary living environment. They are not designed to clean up after you, but they do make sure that the community is clean for those who live in, living in it. We also have our counseling services. You will hear more about that later in the slides, but we have an embedded mental health team along with some counseling interns. Hi, my name is Shiloh Kaminsky, and I'm our Assistant Director for Student Outreach and University Housing. That means I work with any students experiencing distress in their on-campus experience. I also work with our Embedded Mental Health Team and our no, no Woman Left Behind interns. Counseling and Psychological Services, known as CAPS, is a resource available to students on campus who may be experiencing any distress or just need a little extra support on their on-campus experience. A unique service through CAPS just for our on-campus residents is our Embedded Mental Health Team. Our Embedded Mental Health Team is comprised of clinical interns, a counselor in residence, and a full-time mental health clinician. This team meets with students for individual counseling sessions right in your residence hall, and it's free, no cost at all, to on-campus residents. You can schedule your intake appointment by calling CAPS at 479-575-5276. Hi, I'm Megan Witherspoon Evans, and I'm Assistant Director for Residence Education. I work mainly with the north side of campus in our leadership programs. Have you heard about HogSync yet? Well, don't worry, you're gonna hear a ton about it. Just not from us, but from all the other offices on campus as well. This is our one-stop shop to find out what events are happening around campus and how you can get more involved with our different departments within the Division of Student Affairs. Below you can see some of the different logos of the different departments that are also on HogSync in addition to University Housing. Be sure to connect with your community on Instagram. On this slide, you can see all the different handles from around campus. Find your hall and follow us today. Lead Hogs is our premier leadership organization within University Housing. They get to move in early and be the first people to welcome their fellow residents on move-in day. Also, it's a great way to get involved and start building your resume. If you want to start attending leadership workshops and get to know other people, this is the way to do it. Also, within the first couple weeks, you get the opportunity to run for a representative position within Residence Inner Hall Congress. RIC is our student government body within University Housing, so they represent all the students who live on campus. You will get the opportunity to listen to bills, write your own bills, and find ways to either fund events or improve your hall. Additionally, Lead Hogs is the stepping stone to get involved in things like National Residence Hall Honorary or to be a resident assistant. So apply today at housing.uark.edu slash leadhogs. Hi, I'm Ben Musick. I'm one of the assistant directors for residence education. I work with the South Side of Campus, RA training, and CRE selection. I'm gonna take a few moments to tell you about some of the services that we offer through housing. 
Our sustainability efforts are visible in every hall. We try to make sure that you have a chance to contribute to having a sustainable campus. Mails and packages are delivered directly to your hall. We, we handle over 40,000 packages per semester. That's quite a lot, so make sure you know where to get yours. If you have something wrong with your room, say a light bulb's out or you have a leak, make sure you know about our Fix-It service. This is an online service where you can report the problem, and of course, it's free to you. Did you know that all of our rooms come with cable TV? This includes a premium channel package with channels such as HBO. If you'd like to use some of our mental health services on campus, you don't even have to leave your residence hall. We have nine different offices within the halls for you to use. You can make an appointment through CAPS. Our laundry services are covered in the fees that you pay to come to campus. Make sure that you sign up for a laundry alert, which will let you know when machines are open and your laundry is done. We have tech support for you as a student in the residence hall, known as ResNet. This is what will let you access the internet. Remember, as you get ready to come to campus, not to bring a wireless printer or a router. They're not allowed. Finally, we have conference services. We're often asked, what do we do during the summer? Well, it's conferences. If you want to be involved and have a great summer experience, look for more information on this and all of our other services at our website. Thanks. One of the greatest parts of your college experience can be living with a roommate. There are some things you can do to make this as successful as possible. The first is to begin communicating with your roommate before you get to campus in the fall. You can do this through email or social media, whatever works for you. When you begin communicating with your roommate, you can decide who's bringing any shared items to the room, such as a television or a microwave. Once you get to campus in the fall, you'll continue communicating with your roommate, one way being through your roommate agreement. This is a way for your RA to help you create a consensus on you know, rules for your room, such as quiet study time, shared items, anything like that, like a cleaning schedule, anything you need to talk to your roommate about. If any conflict arises throughout the year, your RA or your CRE can help you work through that. Your roommate agreement is a survey that you and your roommate will take part in with your resident assistant. In this survey, you'll get to talk about your expectations for living together in your shared space. Through this survey, your RA will make sure everyone's voice is heard so that you feel like you're comfortable in your room throughout the year. You'll discuss things such as shared items, your cleaning, noise in the room, making sure that you have a comfortable and safe living environment. Hi everyone. So the transition from living where you are now to moving on campus is not an easy one. We understand how important it is to make sure you understand what the first six weeks will look like for you. So as part of that roadmap, I'm going to introduce you to those things. We start with A-Week. A-Week is what happens after you move in and before the first day of classes. A-Week is designed to allow you to meet some of the instructors that you will have, get connected to the campus resources, and participate in large-scale events that are designed for your comfort and enjoyment. We also have Welcome Weeks. Welcome Weeks happens after the first day of classes and the next couple of weeks thereafter. Welcome Weeks will have activities that are broad and include some of our registered student organizations, some of our on-campus organizations like RIC and Lead Hogs and NRHH, which you have heard in some other slides. We will also conduct floor meetings. Floor meetings are designed for you to meet those living in your community as well as the resident assistant who will be working with you. The roommate agreements are designed for you and the person living with you to agree on the standards for which you will live. So what time will you wake up? What time will you go to bed? When can guests and visitors come? Those are some of the inventory questions that you will be asked. During the meetings in your community, you'll have a chance to meet those who are also living on your floor, taking classes with you, and interacting with you on a regular basis. These are the students that you will see on a regular basis and will make great connections with over the course of the year. Hi, my name is Elle Kasich. I am one of the assistant directors for residence education for our housing department. In my role, I specifically oversee the coordinators for residence education, as well as some of the operational processes for our department. If you're curious about where you're living this fall, who your roommates or suite mates may be, um, the room dimensions, your meal plans, 
or what your mailing address for the fall semester will be, you can find all of that information in your housing contracting portal under My Details. If you are planning to participate in sorority recruitment, lead hogs, or marching band this fall, you will have the opportunity to move in early. To sign up for an arrival time, you can do so via your housing contracting portal. However, please wait for a confirmation of your enrollment in one of these groups before signing up for an arrival time. The confirmation could take up to a week after your initial application. If you do not fall into one of the special groups that I just mentioned, you can begin signing up for an arrival time starting June 9th via your housing contracting portal. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephanie Adams and I'm the Associate Director for Academic Engagement. My primary responsibilities entail working with our faculty partners across campus as well as our living learning community. Okay, I'm here to share a few tips with you for a successful move-in process. University Housing will be limiting the number of families that will be moving in on campus each day. We're also asking families to practice social distancing as indicated through the CDC. Um, we are also wanting you all to bring personal and or rental, rented moving equipment if possible because we will have a limited amount of carts and dollies to provide for each family. Also, be prepared to participate in your move-in experience. It is a fun time. We're welcoming you and we're excited to have you. Once you sign up for an arrival time, an arrival hang tag will be mailed to you. We ask that you display this in your rear view mirror. Arrival time, please arrive only at your designated time and not earlier and definitely not later because we will be expecting you all at the time that you indicated. Please label your boxes with your name, building, and room number, and this is important because we would not want any boxes to get misplaced as they're taken to your room. Drink plenty of water. Move-in is in August, and in Arkansas, it gets very warm in August, so we want you all to stay safe. Wear comfortable clothing and closed toe shoes. Again, this is also important because we want you to have an experience of helping out with move-in. We look forward to seeing you. Families, now let's talk about what not to bring to campus during your move-in experience. There, as you see on the slide, there are several picture items that I will cover with you right now. First of all, we ask that you do not bring any flames to campus, any flammable items at all. So like you see a heater, you see a George Foreman grill. Those are not allowed on campus just because of the, the heating elements. We also ask that you don't bring a trailer to campus. Families usually have a tendency to bring a large trailer, a small trailer. Sometimes they even pack their cars two or three at a time, and it's just not enough, it's just not enough space in our residence halls to provide you with that information. Not to mention, trailers are not allowed in our parking lot. So please don't bring a trailer to campus. The other thing that we want to discuss is pets. Um, we ask that you don't bring your pets to campus with you during move-in because it is August, it's going to be very warm, and we will not be able to um, bring that, that pet into the residence hall setting. They would have to stay in your car, and that's not necessarily safe. Then I happen to mention hoverboards. Hoverboards are also prohibited, so please don't bring those. Trailers, did I mention that? Okay, next, next item on the list is candles. Those are flammable as well. We have a tendency to find those every once in a while and they can be taken away because again, it is against regulations to have them in the residence halls. I did mention pets earlier and I forgot to also indicate that you can bring a pet only if it is approved by the Center for Educational Access. So if you have that as a need, please reach out to that office. University Housing has been busy preparing for your arrival Please know that the campus will look a little different in the fall when you arrive. The first thing you'll notice is that in response to COVID-19, we will have a slower move-in process, allowing for students and families to move in at a steady pace. We're asking students to limit the number of guests to two people. In addition, we've added hand sanitizing stations throughout the hall for your ease and convenience. We're going to increase the wiping of surfaces in high-touch areas and continue our high standards for cleaning public areas. Events, they're a big part of the experience you have here at the University of Arkansas. 
And to ensure your experience is a positive one, we're gonna limit the number of attendees going to each event. Our focus will be on the experience you have in your community and with your floor mates. Partnerships are critical to university housing success and to your success as a student. Chartwells is one of our partners and will be providing a variety of healthy options for you this year. No self-service will be available and more to-go options will be. Reach out to Chartwells if you have any specific questions about your dining experience and or your specific needs. Join us on the University Housing Facebook page in July and August for a series of Facebook Live videos where we're going to walk you through the different residence halls and show you some of the great things about the places you'll be living. Also in the red box below, you can see some of our special featured videos that are going to be about other things that are need to know about your arrival in August. And here we are at the end. For more information about the live-in experience that you will have, please visit movein.uc.